So this is my 2017 Yamaha FZ09. I bought this motorcycle in July, so I've had it for a few months now. Um, really like the bike a lot, and I have before I bought the bike, I was searching on YouTube, trying to find some video reviews, a little bit about the bike, and. You know, most of them are just kind of quick overview, and I wanted to do some video to show, you know, a little bit about the bike and some of the good points and the bad points, and um, I've logged about, it's like 2,000, almost 2,200 miles since I bought the bike, and um, it's a daily commuter for me. I drive to and from work every day. So let's go for a ride and let's talk about some of the things that um, that I discovered. Um, this is not my first bike. Um, prior to this, I rode a 2016 Honda CB300F. Um, that was my first bike in several years. I did ride a older 1996 Suzuki Savage 650. Uh, that was my first bike. And I rode that for about two years. And then uh, my wife ended up getting pregnant and the bike had to go. So now my daughter is much older and I decided to get back into riding. Um, it was a more economical choice for us at this time. So I ride, I enjoy riding but I ride more uh, because it's just better for us financially. It saves a lot of money on gas and, you know. And that's about it, I guess. I just really like to ride. Um, some things I could point out that were different so my Suzuki Savage was obviously a cruiser, and it wasn't the it wasn't the fastest bike or it wasn't anything special, um, but I enjoyed it. And I went about uh, six years without riding, and here, beginning about the end of last year, I decided to get back into it, and so I made the purchase of a brand new Honda. CB300F, and it was the goal was to use it as a commuter. I drive about uh, 30 miles a day back and forth to work every day of the week, and it it did its job. I mean, there was nothing spectacular about it. It was a 250 cc bike, I believe. Um. It was okay. I would probably still be riding that motorcycle. However, some folks decided they wanted it more than me. Um, and so they vandalized it and destroyed it. And I ended up getting it replaced. It was totaled out by my insurance. And so I used the payout uh, to buy this bike. And um, I really like this bike. 
Um, I test rode several bikes, and one of my one of my goals when I bought this bike was to get something with a little more power. Um, I found myself on the 300. Uh, seemed like everywhere I go, I was basically full throttle all the time, um, especially during takeoff. Um, and it just kind of, I feel like I was really ringing the bike out. Just, you know, just uh, probably not good for the bike. Um, and so now I am on this bike. And the other bike that I was looking at was the direct competitor to the FZ09. And that was the Triumph Street Triple 675. And I test rode it, and I have some video footage that I can share with you later on. Um, and it was a really good bike, very good bike. Um, one of the things I did not like about it was the seating position. Um, it is a more uh, forward-leaning, a little more aggressive than this FC09. And for me, it just didn't fit my, you know, my likes. Um, I do have some lower back trouble, and that was a defining uh, decision when I purchased this bike, as uh, this FZ09 is a much more upright seating position, more comfortable for me. Um, and so ultimately, I went with the FZ09. The other deciding factor between the Triumph and the Yamaha was the um, maintenance. So for me, the closest Triumph dealer was about 65 miles away. Now, I mean, I have a wife and a daughter and we have a small little family car. So in my mind, in the event that something happened to the Triumph and I needed to get it repaired or serviced, I'd have to figure out a way to get that bike to the Triumph dealer. Um, now, in my area, there's a Yamaha dealer on every street corner, it seems like. So it just made more sense that, you know, my insurance pays for towing, so in the event something happens, I can have the bike towed to the dealer and get the work done on it. So that was another factor. Um, the, you know, the more I ride this bike, the more I like it. Uh, when I first bought it, coming from the 300 to this 850 cc, I was actually pretty intimidated by it. There's a lot of power in this bike, and it's extremely torquey. Uh, I think something. You know, I don't know the exact specs, but I think it's somewhere around the lines of 60 foot-pounds of torque. Um, and the bike hovers around 100, between 100 and 110 horsepower. Um, so, you know, it's quite a bit more powerful than my 300. My 300 was roughly 40 horsepower and something like 30 foot-pounds of torque. Um, so, yeah, it's a considerable jump. Um, and I've been riding this bike for, I don't know, three or four months now. And I'm, you know, beginning to get a lot more comfortable with it. Um, I find myself, you know, really kind of pushing it a lot more now. Um, the bike comes with uh, three different fuel mapping modes. Um, currently, I'm riding it on standard. And it's the middle of the road. I've gotten to be more comfortable with it. When I first bought the bike, I drove it in B mode. Um, and B mode was, uh, the throttle response was a little more laggy, more relaxed. So I guess the best way to describe it would be, um, you could, you could open the throttle up maybe a quarter turn and it would, build power. Um, you still had the full power range 
It's not like it, you know, it dialed the power back at all. But it was the way that the power was delivered. And that seems to be the defining factor in the ride mode. Um, so in B mode, call it rain mode or, you know, bad weather mode, whatever you want to call it, relaxed riding. Um, you could really open up the throttle and, and it wouldn't give you that initial jolt of power. And, uh, you know, that was, it was a good thing, especially when I was learning the bike. You know, learning, to, you know, learning how the bike, uh, performs and just getting accustomed to it. Um, and then I would say for about a month and a half now, I've been riding it in standard mode. And it's quite a bit more responsive. Uh, the power comes on much quicker with a, just a slight turn of the wrist. Um, I have only gone into A mode one time and I didn't like it. Um, primarily because I commute every day and the roads that I travel are very crowded and, you know, making subtle and throttle adjust, uh, throttle adjust, adjustments it just, it's not happy in A mode. It's very jolty. It's very on off. Um, and just, just with minute little throttle changes, you know, driving along at 40 miles an hour and the driver in front of you slows down. And so you let off the throttle to compensate. And the minute that you reapply the throttle, you get this sudden burst of, uh, power. And it, it's just, not comfortable. I mean, it jerks you around. It's, you know, just not practical for daily commuting, in my opinion. Um, so I, you know, st standard mode is is pretty comparable. It, it does everything well. Um, so that's kind of where I leave it. Now I do live in uh, Florida, in the USA, and we get rain pretty much every day. Um, so B mode is, you know, it, it, it does its job, I guess, in, you know, if the, if the roads are wet, you know, I can put it in B mode and, you know, I don't have to worry about it, uh, you know, causing the traction control to kick in or, uh, anything like that. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about the throttle. The clutch, clutch is very light. Um, I have my, my personal preference on the clutch is to be adjusted as, as far out as possible. Um, I do clutch with two fingers. Um, so for me, I like to have it very quick. Um, the bike comes with two traction modes. <clears throat> traction mode two is the most invasive meaning that it's very easy to trigger. Um, traction mode one is less invasive. Um, the biggest thing I could tell you about the traction control is that in mode two, I call it the wheelie control. It will prevent the bike from popping a wheelie. Um, and that's about it. Just like that. The bike will try to come up and as soon as the traction control detects the difference in wheel speed between the front tire and the rear tire, it cuts power. It just basically kills the engine for a split second to bring the bike back down. Um, traction control mode one will allow the bike to, call, to have a wheelie. Um, I'm not a hooligan. I don't drive around doing wheelies. So I like that feature. Um, the third mode is off completely. Uh, no traction control whatsoever. Uh, with that said, the bike does have ABS. Um, I've only had one situation where the rear ABS kicked in, uh, and it did its job. It performed what it was supposed to do and kept the rear wheel from locking up. Um, I tend to be a more cautious rider and I try not to get myself in situations where I need to rely on the brakes that heavily. Um, in the one instance that it did happen, it was because somebody changed lanes in front of me without their turn signal and I had to do a quick stop. 
So that's it for the uh, rider assist. Um, the bike is very quick. Uh, the specs say it'll do zero to 60 in about 2.6 or 2.7 seconds. I can attest to that. It is very quick. Um, when you're riding this bike hard, uh, second gear will get you above any uh, speed limit and definitely get you in trouble. Uh, I think the highest speed limit here in Florida is 70 miles an hour, and it will get you there very quickly. Uh, knock on wood, I have not been pulled over by any police uh, yet. I'm sure it'll happen at some point, um, but so far it hasn't happened. Um, right now I'm taking a ride down one of my favorite roads. Uh, this is the first time I've been down here since the, the biggest uh, hurricane in recorded history came through central Florida. Uh, so I'm just kind of taking a look to see what this road looks like. Um, it's a lot, not a lot of traffic. Uh, it's a nice little windy road that I enjoy. And uh, let's just uh, take a little ride here, see what it uh, what it gives us. Um, you know, I get asked sometimes, you know, is the bike uh, too powerful? And uh, that's a matter of preference. Uh, for some, I would say, yeah, this is a, it's a very powerful bike. Um, one of the big differences that I saw when I rode the Street Triple is that the Street Triple tends to build power. Uh, it's not very powerful off the line, uh, in, in comparison to this bike. Um, that's not to say the Street Triple is not a powerful bike, because it is. Uh, just it develops its power much further up in the RPM range. Uh, this bike, it it's it pulls like a freight train. I'm I'm not kidding. It is strong, right off the line. And the, if you stay within the five to eight thousand RPM range, this thing will just. I mean, you really got to hang on to it. Uh, where the Street Triple, it it did its power. A lot higher, say from the six RPM to you know all the way up to red line. And so, what I would say, comparing these two bikes because they are direct competitors with each other, is that the FC09 is going to take is going to take the lead right off the line, and it's going to hold it. Uh, I would say probably up to about 100 miles an hour. Um, and then at that point, this bike begins to taper off, and the street triple will pull away. Now, if you've got a long enough straightaway and that's all you're concerned about, the street triple is going to win every day. Um, but for the city, you know, stoplight to stoplight, this bike's going to going to kill it. Um, now, I mean. For myself, like I said, I'm a commuter. I ride this bike for a purpose. Um, I get out on the weekend occasionally and go for a ride down little back roads. Um, you know, I I don't necessarily push the bike. Um, you know, I got a family. I got a young daughter. I'm not trying to get myself killed. So, but... The, you know, some of the reviews that I was watching on YouTube and trying to get some information, you know, that was pertinent as far as commuting goes on the bike. Now, everybody can ride the motorcycle on a back road through a curve and tell you how great it is. And um, for me, you know, uh, there were a lot of reviews that compared this bike to the previous year. You know, and they said, well, the suspension's been upgraded and, uh, you know, they've changed the seating position and things like that. 
and that's all well and good. However, I never rode the previous year, so I can't I can't tell you that that was any better or worse. Um, but what I can say is that the suspension on this bike, when I first bought it, was set by the factory, uh, and for I rode it that way for a couple months. And it just felt very, like, cushy, like uh, like you were floating on a cloud. And it, the bike just never felt like it was attached to the road. You know, you, it was very wavy, very uh, floaty. Um, and I finally got around to watching a very good YouTube video on setting the suspension on this exact bike. And so I uh, followed along, and I... I uh, Got everything set up based on my body weight and how how I like it, and I can say that after doing that, uh, the the feedback on the suspension has greatly improved. Um, it is still soft, um, but it's uh, it's a firm. I would say it's a little more on the firm side now, which is, uh, in my opinion, a good thing. Uh, the bumps in the road, you feel them. You, you feel like you're more connected with the road. Um, in my opinion, that's how it should be. So that's uh, my little bit on the suspension. Um, let's talk about the seat. In my opinion, uh, the seat is a little firm. And I find myself that uh, after about an hour in the in the saddle, yeah, my butt hurts, and uh, you know it begins to start to go to sleep. My legs start tingling. Now, I don't know how much of that is related to the seat and how much of that is related to my bad back. Um, so we'll just leave it at that. I know that their Yamaha does offer a upgrade to the seat, a factory upgrade that, uh, to my understanding, is a little more cushioned. Uh, maybe some point in time I'll look at maybe upgrading my seat, but as it stands right now, that's not going to happen. So, um, yeah. The uh, let's see, is there anything else? Uh, the lights. Uh, I saw a lot of reviews uh, complaining about the headlights on this motorcycle. Uh, they are a quad LED setup. They have two LEDs that run uh, on low beam in the center of the display. And there are two headlights uh, directly to the side for the high beam. And with the high beam on, all four LEDs are lit up. And there's also some small little LEDs uh, just below the headlights for running, running lights. Um, I don't do a lot of night riding, so my experience with the headlights has been early in the morning on my way to work. Now, my helmet, uh, I have a mirror finish on my helmet, and it's slightly tinted. And I can say that even with the tinted visor, uh, with the headlights on high beam, I have no problem seeing uh, in the early mornings. Uh, sun hasn't come up yet, but uh, yeah, I, a lot of people say that when you go into the turn, you lose the apex of the turn. Uh, that may be true. I, um, Unfortunately, I don't. I have not ridden on roads that I'm not familiar with uh, in the nighttime. So for me, losing that visibility has not been an issue. Um, I tend to try not to ride unknown roads uh, during the nighttime. To me, it just doesn't make sense. Um, so. I guess that's about it for the headlights. I know that there is an uh, aftermarket kit that Yamaha sells, the column fog lights or additional lighting, uh, but they're extremely expensive, something like $500. Um, and for me, that's just, uh, just not a good buy, in my opinion.
Uh, it's a lot of money for two additional LED headlights. Um, so, yeah. Um, I enjoy riding. Uh, I live in uh, Central Florida. Uh, it's probably the only place in Florida that actually has, uh, well, I guess you'd call them hills. Uh, closest thing to a uh, mountain, I guess, that Florida has. Uh, it's a beautiful part of Florida. Um, I really enjoy it. So, that's, uh, that's about that. Um, so this is uh, my first ever uh, video log, YouTube video, I guess whatever you want to call it. I just thought I'd give a stab at it and uh, see how it goes. Uh, I may never make another video again. I don't know. Uh, it all depends on uh, who's watching and, you know, if anybody has any other questions or information about the bike or, you know, myself. Uh, something to note about the mirrors, I guess. Uh, I rely heavily on my mirrors. I drove uh, semi-trucks and heavy equipment for many years. And uh, I've, I've grown accustomed to using my mirrors. And so I, uh, you may not find me uh, doing a head check when I change lanes or... Uh, you know, merge or whatever, uh, it's because I'm using my mirrors. Um, to add to that, I use a helmet uh, that's made by a company called Review, and it actually has a rear view mirror system built into it. So just above my brow, I have a, a horizontal mirror that runs the length of the front of the helmet, and it gives me a full view of what's directly behind me. Um, so with that said, between my side mirrors and my helmet mirror, I have a complete 360-degree uh, view of what's in front of me and what's to the side of me and what's behind me. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that part of it. And this is one of my favorite parts of the whole ride here. Just kind of a nice little uphill swoop. Um, yeah, they call me corny, but it's a nice smooth road, nice little curve, uphill. Um, this is uh, quite a ritzy, ritzy little area of uh, folks here. Um, nothing bad about that, just a nice little area to ride through. Man, look at that view. My favorite, favorite view. So next time somebody tells you Florida doesn't have mountains, you can tell them, uh, yeah, they're not mountains, but uh, they're the closest thing to mountains that we have, just in my opinion. Um, some things to note, I guess the, uh, the gearbox, uh, gearbox is, uh, pretty smooth in my opinion. Downshifts are smooth. It does have a, uh, slipper assist clutch. Um, does a pretty good job. And that looks like, a Adam over there. I've seen him around a few times. Pretty cool car. Um, so let's go ahead and jump out here. That was the best part of the uh, ride there. I just love going over that, around that curve and seeing that uh, drop off with all the hills and the lake. Uh, it's quite the, uh, quite the view in my opinion. 
let me know what you think. Uh, like I said, this is my first uh, video. If you, uh, if you think I did a horrible job, that's fine. Tell me. I won't ever do a video again. Uh, if you think I did a great job, let me know. Maybe uh, with some help from the community, I'll uh, put together another video, and we'll see how it goes from there. Uh, it was nice uh, talking to you all, and uh, we'll see you on the road.